For a subtle yet creepy intro, it's already got my attention. This is The Voyeurs, and I'm sure you already have a good idea of what you're in store for. But spoiler alert for those of you who would like to try it out for yourself, links to the film are in the description. Now that we've seen somebody's peeping on Pippa, we go through the opening credits that really put us up close and personal with eyeballs, and some of them are a bit disturbing to see in that much detail. Pippa heads back to her apartment where Thomas is signing a contract with the property manager. As Pippa gets home, Thomas sweeps her off her feet, and they're both really excited to make the move. Pippa can't seem to get over the fact that she's moving in with Thomas, and they sign the final lines in the contract. That night, the two of them share a small, romantic Chinese dinner, and Pippa mentions that she doesn't want to have kids for another four years. They agree with each other, and they decide they'd rather spend their time making terrible decisions rather than worrying about kids. Soon some industrial light flashes draw their attention across to the other apartment building. After the new neighbors start getting it on, Pippa makes Thomas leave the room with her so they can get some privacy. Pippa takes the time to get all ready for Thomas, and we see her in the outfit that she was trying on earlier. When she comes out to surprise Thomas, he's sound asleep, and no matter how hard she tries to convince him, he just won't wake up. The next morning, Pippa goes on her way, and she takes in everything of her new life. Eventually, she meets up with her friend Ari, who congratulates her for the big move. Pippa goes on to tell her about her sexy neighbors, and even Ari tries to tell her that it's only polite to look if they're exhibitionists. Is, is that the general consensus? If I see someone getting it on in their home, am I supposed to just pull up a chair and watch them? Soon we meet Pippa's boss, Dr. Sato, and she gives Pippa a nice little housewarming present, a bird feeder to hang outside her window. Yeah, that'll be perfect to add to the banging neighbors outside the window. Back at the house, Thomas is making the house a little warmer for the two of them, but he wants to check on the neighbors. He mentions that he wants to be friends with them, and Pippa starts to warm up to the idea. Suddenly they start to notice that the man is choking, and they try to coach the girlfriend unknowingly. As they watch, they see the girl save him, and they celebrate on their own. I would have put up the curtains by now. The last thing I would have wanted on my conscience is the idea of having watched someone choke to death from my own apartment. This is how you find out secrets that get you in a lot of trouble. That night, Pippa looks across the way to the neighbors again, but this time she seems to fantasize about the man's body. As her eyes go over his body, she starts to feel it in her own body more until she sees him look straight at her. The next night, Pippa buys a pair of binoculars, and the two of them spy on the neighbor yet again. That's the kind of trivia that'll keep me invested in a story indefinitely. If your fun facts aren't like that, I have no interest in your story. They see that the man talks the visitor out of her clothes so they can do a photo shoot, and they're amazed at how smooth he is. They watch the man rub all over the woman, and it sparks something in Pippa. Pippa hands the binoculars to Thomas, and she makes him take his clothes off. As he watches, Pippa starts to touch Thomas in all sorts of ways. If this is one of those bad decisions Pippa was talking about earlier, I wasn't expecting something like this. I was thinking maybe they'd have a few day drinking days or stay out too late on a Monday night, not get it on while you spy on the neighbors who are also getting it on. As Thomas goes at her, Pippa makes him do it exactly how the neighbor's doing it to the other woman, but he can't go as long as the other man. As Thomas goes to get a rag for Pippa to clean up, she goes back to spying on the neighbors who are still going. Pippa's getting a little excessive with this spying crap. Even after they go to bed, she lies awake and eventually goes back to spying on them again. Then she sees the actual girlfriend come home and even they get it on too. The next day, Pippa explains what she saw to Ari and her other friend, Joni, who is Thomas' sister. They have a split viewpoint on how to handle the situation, but Joni comes up with a plan to help them spy with audio. When they get back home, Thomas explains how he could technically use a laser to bounce the sound from the other apartment back to them but they would need to set up a mirror in the apartment for it to work. I mean, they're already spying on them, they might as well add breaking and entering to the list of potential charges. That night, Pippa comes up with a plan to dress up and go to the party that's happening at the other apartment. Inside, Pippa's swept off her feet by the neighbor, Seb. Once he finally puts her down, he sets the two of them up for a photo shoot. After taking a few pictures, Seb wanders off. Thomas and Pippa celebrate and party along with everyone else and they decide that this terrible decision was a great idea after all. As Thomas goes to use the bathroom, Seb walks out as he goes in, and Thomas sees. The Seb guy's literally just walking around grabbing the closest woman. Him and his member are running the party, and Thomas is definitely not used to this lifestyle at all. As Pippa plants a device to reflect their laser later, the girlfriend Margot walks up. Margot snatches a joint out of Thomas's mouth and tells them to enjoy themselves. After they go back home, Pippa and Thomas start setting up their laser and get some feedback from the apartment. After they get the sound focused, they hear Margot yelling at Seb about how he had a woman in the bathroom at the party. 
He questions if she still loves him, and he manipulates her into believing that she's going crazy for thinking he's cheating on her. After some more words are shared, Seb throws her down, and it becomes clear that he's abusing her to make her think that she's in the wrong. The next day, Pippa doesn't feel too good about everything she heard, but Margot actually shows up at her job to get an eye exam. Also, we find out that Margot is actually called Julia now, so change your mindset and know that Margot is actually Julia now. As Julia gets ready to leave, she turns around to invite Pippa to coffee sometime. Meanwhile, Thomas decides to set up the laser again, and he listens in on Seb as he shoots photos of another woman. At first, the woman seems to be against the idea, but after Seb works his word magic, she turns around and decides to stay for the fun. When Pippa gets home that evening, she tells Thomas that she's going to be hanging out with Julia, and even he can't believe that she came to her eye clinic of all places. The more they talk about it, the more Thomas thinks that they should drop the neighbor stuff. He just wants it to go back to just being the two of them, and he questions whether he's enough for her. A few days later, Julia and Pippa hang out at a spa, and they connect even more. This poor woman is so trapped in the way things are for her, she even goes on to explain that everything she has or does is because of Seb, so that just plays into the fact she doesn't think she can really afford to lose him. She's trapped. That night, Pippa goes back to spying on them and she sees them cuddling. As time passes, she continues spying on them and watches as Seb cheats more and tries to play loving boyfriend to Julia. She becomes so involved that we barely even see her communicate with Thomas anymore. One night, she sets up the laser and she puts on headphones so she doesn't wake up Thomas. Across the way, Pippa tries to connect to Julia's printer via Bluetooth, and eventually she finds the right one. Pippa proceeds to type her a message that says Seb is cheating on her, and when Julia reads it, she gets a little more concerned on who's sending her these messages. Yeah, if my ghost printer was telling me my significant other was cheating, I might be a little inclined to believe it. I mean, Pippa even goes as far to tell Julia where he hid his condom. Soon Thomas wakes up and he begins to ask her what she's done. He finds out that Pippa's finally told her, and they watch as Julia grabs a knife and heads for Seb who's sleeping in their bed. The next morning, Thomas wakes Pippa up with a glass of coffee, and he talks to her about how he doesn't think he can trust her. He's not sure that he's enough for her, and she promises that she's done with all of it. When she looks across the apartment though, she finds that Seb is holding a bloody, lifeless Julia on their kitchen floor. Thomas can't handle what's happening, and he breaks up with her as he rushes out of the house. Pippa tries to ask what they should do now, and he makes sure she knows that all of this is because she wouldn't listen to him in the first place. The next day, Pippa calls Julia's phone to try and act as though nothing has happened, and her glasses have come in. That night, Pippa spies on Seb, and she sees the rage as he rampages out of his apartment. She envisions herself comforting him. But when she sees him head to the bar downstairs, she heads to join him. Once inside, she grabs a seat far from him and keeps her eye on him from afar. Suddenly, his gaze meets hers, and he comes over to her to talk to her. As he questions her about her personal sexual preferences, he begins to show his emotions that he had for Julia. Things start to seem like he's accusing her of something, but it becomes clear that he's just grieving in his own way. By the end of the night at the bar, Seb's worked his magic, and the two of them are headed upstairs to his apartment to take a picture. As he takes her picture, he literally pulls the same kind of stuff on her that he pulls on his other women. And it still works even though she knows how he works. Seb strips down to his socks to make her feel more comfortable, and Pippa reciprocates. Seb starts to crack and he tells her that she reminds him of someone. Pippa moves closer to try and console him, but Seb takes his chance to start kissing her. Obviously this quickly turns into a hot and heavy photo session instead of whatever it was before. No, no, don't do that to him. Oh, I know he's a fictional character, but he still doesn't deserve that. As Thomas walks into the apartment, he notices that no one's home, and he starts to look around. Finally, he catches a glimpse of the neighbor's apartment, and he goes to get the binoculars. As he spies on them, he begins to tear up. The next morning, Pippa wakes up next to Seb, and she gets dressed to go back home. Once she reaches her door, she notices that it's cracked open. When she goes inside, she finds a horrifying scene. After emergency services arrive, Pippa seems to become numb to everything all the way past the funeral. As time passes, Pippa eventually goes out to see Ari for dinner. Once she explains the story to her, Ari defends her as a best friend does, but there's only so much defense for a guilty conscience. Pippa explains that she thinks she needs to see Seb again to find closure, and she talks herself into going to the opening of his gallery that night. As she tries to get closer to him, he pulls away and heads up to the stage. He explains that none of this would have been possible without Julia, so… Uh, excuse me? Sure enough, Julia explains that this project is about a woman named Pippa, and they reveal one of her nude photos on the wall. The two of them explain the whole story from start to finish, and she sees how her actions led to the end of her life as she knew it. 
Honestly, she should have seen something like this coming. But there's no way that someone could have gotten away with this public showing. There's just no way. Now I feel really bad for Thomas. He literally died for no good reason. After the art show debacle, Pippa heads to Seb's apartment and finds the equipment and setup for all of the spying that Seb and Julia did to accomplish their art project. After she smashes all of it, Pippa ends up trying to pick up the pieces of her life. She gets the apartment completely empty and leaves it. In her last months there, she takes one last glance at Seb and Julia who are simply eating a meal together. As Julia waves to Pippa, we cut to an interview that Seb and Julia are a part of. As the two of them defend their actions, Seb starts to show a little bit of remorse for the situation, and he snaps back at the interviewer. As the two of them get back to the apartment, Seb shows that it's clearly bothering him, and Julia starts to seem like she has no heart for any bit of the situation. When he asks her if she ever feels guilty, she replies with a simple no. Just then, the printer prints a message saying, I know. Next, it says that Thomas didn't commit suicide. Finally, a paper prints with the repeated message of, you killed him. As they look for Pippa, they find her on the roof of her apartment running away. Seb and Julia chase after her but Pippa isn't having it. They chase her to the eye doctor's office and they begin to question her. As Julia starts to explain why they did it, she starts to stumble over her words. And she eventually drops to the ground. Soon, Seb starts to feel it. And Pippa admits to having drugged them in the wine they had. After they pass out, Pippa sets them up in surgery chairs and she fries their eyes. Soon, we see a new couple has taken over the old apartment and they peek into the neighbor's apartment through the window. What they see are Seb and Julia wandering their apartment blind. As Pippa peeks on them one last time, she sets the binoculars down and leaves it all behind. For a movie that seemed like it was advertised as a swinger relationship with a tiny dark secret, this took a turn that really changed the dynamic of what happened up to that point. It was tastefully done and I loved every second of it. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.